What's up, everybody? It's I, Ken Snake. Ladies and gentle pets, it is time for Eve of Destruction. Greetings, everyone. This is CC Trainerling. What is going on, everyone? It's James the Con Man, and I just got one simple question. Do you know the enemy? Do you know the enemy? Well, you gotta know the enemy. But who is the real enemy in this episode, you may ask? It's everyone. Good it's answer for me! It's mostly <laughs> Well, yeah, it's a little thing we call an Eve of Destruction. See, this guy knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> and so, everyone, without further ado, let's jump right into the plot. So the plot here is Mrs. Twombly is on a cleaning frenzy, and when she runs out of her usual Mrs. Applebottom's Omega-3 cleaning spray, she leaves to frantically find some more, and Blythe is left to manage the shop, while also trying to keep peace between Zoe and her former modeling rival and LPS day camper, Madame Palm. Elsewhere in the shop, Penny, Ling, and Vinny fantasize and practice their respective dancing techniques in the hopes of forming a dance act, which leads to rather unpleasant results. So my first positive in this episode would definitely have to be our guest pet, Madame Palm. This is the first episode where we're introduced to her, who later becomes a recurring character. And as you can tell by my picture, she's one of my favorite pets in the entire series. For the longest time, though, like for two years after this episode aired, I swear she had a French accent because that's what it sounded like to me. And she said some French words. And since I took French class, I know some French. But I was told a few months ago that she's based off of the Gabor sisters, Zaza and Eva Gabor. And she actually has a Polish accent, in surprisingly. She's voiced by Kathleen Barr, and Kathleen makes Palm's voice sound so amazing. I couldn't agree more. Mm -hmm. There's just something about that accent. It, you just can't get it out of your head. Polish Pomeranian, PP. Yes. Oh, yeah. No, you're not alone on that, Snake. Um, when it comes to uh, thinking that Madame Palm was French at first, because, you know, we got some French words sprinkled in there, you know, the accent sounded vaguely French, but turns out Polish. Who would have thunk it? <laughs> well, I guess if you're trying to go for uh, somewhat of a generic kind of European kind of holier-than-thou-art kind of accent, so, you know, I guess a little bit of French could be sprinkled in there, even though it's supposed to be Polish, but... Eh, what do we know? <laughs> Apparently not that much about Polish accents, am I right? Honestly, I thought the accent at first sounded sort of German. At least, you know, maybe like German probably mixed in with some Polish and maybe some French. I don't know. Nine. That's what it sounded like the first I time. Say, I would say it's a combination of the three. <laughs> you know, make every... Yeah. It's probably Gerfraulish. So yes. is it French or is it Italian? For it's Italian. Not like, <laughs> it's not like <laughs> what you assume, Madame Palm's like, Mamma mia, rigatoni pasta. <laughs> She's Mamma Mario. Mia, spaghetti, ravioli. So, Madame Palm, what do you think of Zoe? Nine! Okay, calm down. Nine. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that dog. Oh, hey, that dog of mine. Our next positive would have to be one that we can all agree on. Say it with me now, guys. One, two, three... Mrs. Mrs. Twombly. Twombly. <laughs> Mrs. Twombly. Oh, man, I'm late, ain't I? If there's one character who could have definitely stolen the whole show, it's Mrs. Twombly. Of course. Of course. Honestly, I never would have thought that Mrs. Twombly would go this crazy over one thing of cleaning spray. Yeah, right. <laughs> I know, right? Just Mrs. Apple Bottoms. Omega 3s. And she's so elaborate when she talks about how it's made. Free range chickens trained in classical music? <laughs> hey man, that's how you know it's the best. Yes, yeah, because there's a lot of chickens out there who happen to be well versed in Beethoven. Now, I don't know about you, but I want my chickens to know Beethoven. I want them to know the Ode to Joy. I'll also expand on Twombly in this episode. She was really fun and really entertaining. Like Cece said, she stole the episode, even from Madame Palm. I mean, I love cleaning as much as the next guy, but personally, I wouldn't like to have that much OCD to clean every single thing for one day, even if it's not dirty. I'm not saying it's a bad thing for her, because she does it in a really hilarious way. She's saying it's dirty, dusty, tank and musty, and She's just saying the same platitude over and over again. Of course. I, a, she, she arguably has the best freakouts of this episode, if not the whole series. <laughs> sort of, maybe. Say. Hey. Oh, you're not wrong, man. You're not wrong. The way she just freaks out on everybody, like, No, Mrs. Applebottom! Applebottom. <laughs> <It's> so... <laughs> 
Oh man, I lost it when she got completely crazy in that big store and then she said, Oh, you've come for cleanliness, then you've come to the wrong place. And just jumped to the park. <laughs> and then she just starts going even crazier. And then when she goes on the big screen at Town Town City, I thought that was hilarious. Oh, yeah. Scaring that poor window washer almost off his support. Like, do I smell Omega 3s? <laughs> Apparently, I didn't know they had a smell. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> she has that. Hey, she has a sensitive nose to anything that smells good and can help her clean better. Of course. And she must be half monkey to be upside down all the time. But anyway. Man, that was freaking awesome how she was able to defy the laws of physics. But we can all agree that this is one of Twomley's best, right, guys? Oh, that. of course. Absolutely. Yes. Forever. Forever. My next positive is definitely Penny and Vinny with all their dancing moments, including their fantasies. Yeah. Yeah, just what else can I say but two different dancing techniques combined together to make this dance act? Okay, it's not the most ideal, but I will say it's probably very original. A ribbon dancer with a bad dancer. Well, this should be an interesting mix. What's more interesting is how much ribbon Penny had. <laughs> Like, how much is in that stick? A lot. What, is it like um, a never-ending ribbon stick? It's the never-ending ribbon stick. Well, uh, I'm not really singing too well right now. <laughs> it's the never-ending ribbon stick. <laughs> there we go. Like, to go not much better, but hey, you know, the joke works. Mm, yeah, I think mine was better. To go That's... all over the shop and just make that much of a scene and a mess... Only her and Vinny. I don't think anyone else could have ever made a mess that big. Nah. Yeah. Oh, no way. Wait, are we agreeing or disagreeing? Agreeing, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah agreeing, so. agreeing. Apparently everyone was saying no, so I thought that someone else could make a bigger mess. <laughs> Not Russell. He's always clean. Wow. Yeah, Russell's Russell an was... even less clean freak than Twombly. That yeah. says quite a lot, doesn't it? Yeah. He's rather tame by comparison. <laughs> Yeah, I'm actually surprised he didn't, you know, try to help Twombly out with all that cleaning. Oh, hey, to you and me, and Russell, and Blythe, the place wasn't that dirty, so I don't really see him doing that. But not those pencils, though. Yeah, those pencils. <laughs> or, or that hair. Somebody could have breathed, breathed it into their lungs. <gasps> Both their lungs. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. <laughs> it's not funny. A disclaimer notice, ladies and gentle pets, that that joke was actually pretty hilarious, but I'm referencing something that Cece and I have watched many times. My next positive would definitely have to be Zoe's and Madame Palm's backstory. They've known each other for years, and it's because of that one acting competition. Hello, ladies and gentle pets, it's me again. I just wanted to say that that was a modeling competition and not an acting competition. And now back to your originally scheduled League of Pet Shoppers review. Where they... It decided if they went pro or not and it's really amazing that zoe still had a grudge against madame palm about that competition i loved how they worked the rivalry into the show so early on and zoe and palm got about it in a really cute and entertaining way i'm trying to remember what show they're parodying it was america's next top model oh yeah i remember america's top model with tyra bank yeah or yeah, uh, what's her name uh, what's her name in the LPS universe? Um, Javante or Levante uh, or, oh, or what's she's her like, it's, it's just something. She she does that thing. She has that diva's snap gesture of approval or whatever does she she does with her hand. I believe that was a thumbs up of approval. And the part that I really loved from her in this episode, or the most memorable for me, is just the next top fashion model is and has like that face that she lip lip lip. <laughs> that part's actually hilarious. It's always going to be hilarious. Alicia, Alicia Fox, she is not, though. Of course, she isn't. She isn't foxy. Hmm, not yet. And we just work on the uh, coloring of her hair and maybe work on the clothes, then maybe foxy. Yeah. Foxy. Oh, uh, sorry. Talking about foxy ladies, and I just thought of Jimi Hendrix. So now I guess it's the time to move on to the negative of the episode. If there's one thing I didn't like about this episode, it would have to be really, really minor, because I really enjoyed this episode. Near the beginning, when Blythe wanted to ask Twombly a question, she said ask away, but then purposely turned on the loud vacuum 
therefore just kind of disregarding what she just said. Blythe was trying to ask her question, but since the vacuum was too loud, she was forced to resort to screaming her question because Twombly had the vacuum on. But when Twombly turned it off, she acted like Blythe wasn't supposed to yell her question and made Blythe said sorry. This it kind of bothers me a bit because... Either Twombly was trying to troll Blythe, or she didn't know what she was doing. Well, okay, here's the thing. Mrs. Twombly was on her cleaning fever, so she would kind of have that number one priority over anything else. So even with Blythe wanting to ask the question, and what she just said was to ask away, she still was focused on cleaning more than anything else. Oh yeah, of course. And now, this was to establish this a little bit more by actually showing us and not telling us. They basically didn't go, and now, as you look and see, Mrs. Twomley is focusing more on her cleaning than anyone else right now, because that is her number one priority. And now we return back to Little's Pet Shop. Next time there is something, we will actually tell you exactly what it is, and then we'll proceed with pretty colors. You know, they're not doing something like that, which I'm glad. Nah, I mean? Mm-hmm. Yes. Say. Hey. Hey. Sorry, something that made me chuckle a little bit is just, trying to imagine Mrs. Tomley trying to troll Blythe. I think that would just be hilarious. Just her saying, are you mad, sweetie? All in all, this was a very, very great episode. It's a top-tier episode, and I would consider it my second favorite episode of the entire series. It's incredibly entertaining. There are many quotable lines from this episode. The voice they gave Madame Pom is excellent and spot-on, and every detail worked perfectly. I also enjoyed how they added three storylines into one episode, and it all combined at the end. The Zoe's and Madame Palm's rivalry, Penny's and Vinny's dance act, and Twombly's cleaning inch. It all came full circle at the end when Penny's and Vinny's dance act and Zoe's and Madame Palm's routine uh, collided, and then Twombly came into the pet shop. So I thought it was really cool they could squeeze all of that into 22 minutes so i would give this episode a 10 out of 10 it's time now for bacon's thoughts and bacon's thoughts are very different from your thoughts ladies and gentlemen pets so let's see what we've got in store for eve of destruction so it comes to a surprise to no one that i love this episode especially due to the fact that mrs plomley is one of my favorite characters but a lot of things were pretty awesome in this episode Every character had their shining moment. Even characters who weren't the main focus had their shining moment. Minka had actually a great moment in this episode, even though it was probably just one or two. But I just love seeing Minka being happy. But let me tell you the two that she had. First was when she had the portrait of Madame Pom, when she was painting Madame Pom's portrait. And while it didn't come out as great as Madame Pom would have hoped, Zoe was there to make Mika happy even after Madame Pom showed her dislike towards this. And of course I love seeing Mika be happy. And another moment that Minka had was when she was helping Blythe out with the display area in the window. So that, that was nice too. Always love seeing my favorite characters be happy. And the comedy in this episode was pretty good also. And to be perfectly honest with you, the majority of, that of my positives have already been said in this review. I'm just basically reiterating them, so I don't want to repeat too much. So, the only other thing that I can say is that I really like how they handled so much within 22 minutes, because there was about four to five things that were going on at once in this episode. So it was pretty interesting to see that the show can handle that many at once. Sorry, ladies and gentle pets, I just glitched out for a second. There's not much for me to add here, so I'm kind of in a, a little bit of a bind here. All the characters were great. They all had their shining moments. The speech at the end with Russell trying to motivate everyone to clean, even though Pepper had the best line with that. And there's not much else I can really add here. So I guess, is there any real negatives that are in this episode? No! Well, then I guess that settles it. I guess um, time for score. So with basically everything being said previously, I don't want to really repeat everything that everyone has said because these are my positives also. There's no real strong negative in this episode. The only thing I can think of is probably just that it was just shy of a 10 out of 10. 
I don't know, this episode is such an odd case because I love this episode, but for some reason, I don't know what it is. I can't really pinpoint it exactly of what prevents him from getting a 10 out of 10. Just bear with me, please. It's just that it's just short of getting a 10 out of 10. It just has a 9.9 out of 10. So it's a great episode, one I recommend for everyone. For myself, it's a fantastic episode. It's one that is just amazing to watch. Seeing how my favorite character, Mrs. Twomley, gets a good amount of spotlight. So what can you say about Eve of Destruction? What the heck can you say about Eve of Destruction? Well, as a whole, this episode is not only humorous in many regards, but it's actually quite memorable. I think it has a lot to do with Mrs. Twombly. Before this episode came out, I didn't think too much on her. I mainly saw her as just some sweet old lady who ran a pet shop. But after watching this, I've come to think of Anna T as one of the funniest characters in this series. I mean, you'd never expect her to go this crazy for a certain cleaning spray. But looks can be deceiving. She's my number one positive of this episode, with freak ass you can't help yourself from laughing at. For my second positive, Madame Pom was very entertaining, and Zoe's rivalry with her really hits close to home, since I'm sure we've all had rivals at one time in our lives. I'm glad to see Zoe and Pom were able to reconcile their differences at the end, although I will admit I thought this was going to be a one-time deal with this Polish Pomeranian. But if we fast forward to the second season, you'll see this newly formed friendship was not a waste of time. Now if there were any two characters in this episode who don't seem to get recognized too much in conversation, it would have to be Penny Ling and Vinny. Two different dancing styles being merged into one performance, you say? Well, that sounds kinda cray. But then again, it's not that cray. I would say it's rather unique. In spite of them effectively ruining the shop, they still made for a great time bar none. But I guess I can see why they'll never dance together again, not even in their creative fantasies. Vinny's song sample was alright and Penny's ribbon dancing, well, need I say more? When Vinny said she needed a longer ribbon, he wasn't kidding. I mean, come on, how much ribbon did she have anyway? I don't have too much to say on Sunil and the electric mice toys. I mean, it was funny, but definitely not a highlight. To finish things off, this episode is in my list of most memorable episodes, especially in the first season, and I give thanks to the pets and, of course, Mrs. Anity for making this episode worth every second. This episode is getting the score I feel it deserves, and that's a 10 out of 10. You can't get any clearer than that. You know, I'm going to keep this one short and sweet, too. I don't really have too much to say here, because everything that has been that can't be said has been said and so i'm just gonna let the numbers do the talking 9.5 out of 10 sweet Noise. this is an episode that i would recommend to anyone that's new to the new to the series and wants to kind of get a general grasp of of what to expect then you know this is definitely a, a good one to start off with yeah yeah well actually the first episode technically but this is a good episode <laughs> it no. is a good one after after the first one like you yeah. want more but you don't want to go into chronological order. Yeah, if you, if you just want to go all over the place. But still, yeah. noise. Noise. Next yeah, week noise. on our randomizer list is going to be season two, so let's see what it holds. Bring on the randomizer! Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the randomizer. Right, and right, the right, episode right, the right, randomizer right. gives us is Eight Arms to Hold You. Yes. Oh, okay. We're kind of, uh, <laughs> we're kind of doing a, a bad episode sandwich here. For me. Oh, yeah. Man, you're not even going to be optimistic. It's just, wow, this episode sucks, and that's it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, come on, come on. I'm just messing with him. I'm messing with you. We're going to let my judgment come back whenever I see this again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's actually been a while since I've seen this one. So, ladies and gentle pets, this is Downloads Bacon. I can snake. CC Trainerling. In the memory of Undusty Roads, James the Con Man. We'll miss the American dream. Peace out, home slices. Same pet shopper time, same pet shopper channel. See you later. So, ladies and gentle pets, we'll be seeing you in the next episode. So, thanks, and thanks again.